This is Twit. Rising 9, 3950X. Um, man, you want to talk about timing something for impact, right? E3, 9900, whatever. Intel's making noises at the corner of the big gaming show. Look at us. We've got a fast processor. It's only $2,000. It's practically affordable by our standards. Uh, and I'm setting this up just to be particularly cruel. Um, you know, uh, <sighs> That is cruel. You know, Think so of all those nice people at Intel is, who are going to be hurt by your words. <laughs> Some of whom we know personally. Um, but, right, so we got Intel's, you know, 18-core chip. And so some Geekbench numbers, uh, Geekbench 4 numbers show up. And I'm, I'm going to kind of stick closely to the WCCF Tech article, which uh, Hassan... Mushtaba wrote, which I highly recommend you go and read in detail because it's an awesome story and I'm grateful for him to bring it to our attention. But uh, man, so Geekbench 4, AMD Myrtle, uh, that's that's AMD's internal test platform name, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4100 megahertz. Quote, the exact clock speeds of the chips are not being reported since the base frequency is mentioned as 3.3 gigahertz and 4.3 gigahertz compared to the final specs of 3.5 gigahertz and 4.7 gigahertz for base boost clocks. Um, so we don't know what the deal is. Um, but we do know that the only AM4 chip with a 16-core 32-thread configuration is the 3950X. So this is technically running slower than what should be the factory clocks. Look at those numbers there. Single-score number of 5868, multi-core number of 61,072. That sounds fantastic, but benchmarks in a vacuum without comparison are useless. So let's put that into perspective. Uh, a Ryzen Threadripper 2950X gets around 4,800 points in single and 38,000 points in multi-core tests on average. So 1,000 points higher in single score, or about 20%, and somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 35 45% higher in multi-core. Um, the red thread, the Threadripper is 16 cores, costs $899. Uh, the Intel Core i9 9980XE scores around 5,300 points in single, or about 500 uh, points slower than the uh, almost almost 600 points, between 500 and 600 points slower in single. Uh, and the i9 9980XE is 42,000 points in multi-score, or approximately, let's call it 40% slower. Uh, it has 18 cores. It is priced at $2,000. So. Okay, what does Ryzen's flagship cost? Hmm, the estimate we're hearing is about $500. So would you rather have 50% faster performance in, in multi-threaded applications for $500? Or would you rather pay more money for something that was considerably slower? Oh, wait, it was something in the neighborhood of four times as much. Um, and, and the 3950X... Uh, they kept the actual pricing hidden until the final, like one more thing revealed during their E3 presentation. And I'm sorry, 749, 749. Yeah. The 499 for the 3900 X and it's 749 for the 3950 X. I apologize. It's only, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't it's know. let me do some actual far math. less than half uh -huh. as much money. Yes. Yeah. A third um, as much money. Oops. So, how solid are we feeling about these numbers? I'm. I the only thing I wonder about is you mentioned you alluded to the clock speeds three point three and four point five. I think it was, or was it three? Yeah, three point four and four point three. The the base boost clocks on thirty nine fifty X are going to be interesting to look at, especially in a workload longer than Geekbench, which runs for a few minutes, because they're hitting a very aggressive TDP with this. That was. The most surprising thing to me, I knew they were going to have a 16 core. We've heard rumors about this for a long time. They're putting two chiplets on the package. So at some point, you'd think they'd both be fully enabled eight core chiplets. So mm -hmm. that being said, it's already been announced. It's not here yet. It's It doesn't have an official release date. It's just being teased for like September. So at some point before the end of the year, early, mid, late September, we might see these things for sale. And I, I wonder if part of that is binning, just the process of getting enough of these that can actually <laughs> perform at that level because there may be an early sample is only at 3.3 to you know 
But right. the, the final specs, what they've been able to determine they can get from this thing while hitting this aggressive 105 watt TDP, which is the same TDP as the 3900X, which obviously has some cores disabled, even though it is a dual chiplet 12 core part. Mm -hmm. You know, the, to, to have four more cores running at a higher turbo, because the 3900X is 4.6 gigahertz and the 3950X is 4.7 does have a lower base clock, which we've seen. These scale down to lower base clocks the higher the core count goes. Threadripper's the same way. And that's simply it, dealing with the physics of, of the heat being generated by right. the cores. Yeah. I mean uh, so, it, it would be nice <laughs> if we could keep all the cores running at the same clock speed. Yes. Um, and you know it with really good cooling then I don't think that these are the lowest geek mesh numbers or the highest geek mesh numbers you would see for this processor. If you can consistently right. get it, and they, they offer some overclocking, the precision boost overclocking. Uh, I know that uh, Robert Halleck was talking about up, up to plus 200 megahertz speeds on these, and they were doing some fun things while we were there, like dinner the first night they had a 3950X uh like off to the side, you had people overclocking, professional overclockers on LN2, getting it over 5 gigahertz. <laughs> so it's, you know, with exotic cooling, yes, you could overclock a lot, but I'm sure they're reaching about as far as they possibly can to get that 4.7 turbo. And I'm not sure exactly how right. their turbo works. And Halleck was trying to sort of explain it in response to somebody on Twitter. He said, it's not like Intel. It's basically you only have a limit of uh, power delivery to the CPU, temperatures, um, voltage, to potentially hit higher boost clocks on more cores, where Intel, like the 9900K, is up to 5 gigahertz on the first two cores, and then it drops right. until you're at like 4.5 to 4.7 on the last cores. And that new product they tease is the, kind of the same situation as Ryzen 9 90, or 3950X, which is the i9-9900KS, and right. that is the product they teased as five gigahertz on all cores all the time, but it's not available yet. And this, the speculation is that it's going to take them a while, even with automatic binning, to find enough parts to release this with right. that extremely it's aggressive such a, target. I, I think everybody listening understands binning, for, but for anybody out there who doesn't, the idea is that they test processors, you know, there's the fab, the chips are manufactured, they're put in the case, you have a thing, you drop it in a, in a, in a test bed, and the test bed basically throttles it up to see uh, how stable it holds at higher frequencies. And bin sorting is like, oh, this chip runs really, really well at you know, base frequency, and it runs okay at base frequency plus, so we can sell it as base frequency plus. This one, wow, it's like twice as good as that one, so that's gonna be a premium processor, and that's grossly oversimplified. Um, but the idea here is that literally, let's say one in every hundred, one in every two thousand, one in every eight, we have no idea what the actual number is, of the processors they will produce will scale up to run all cores at five gigahertz. Why is that? Super magic peri you know, fixie dust. Some something happens in the process where that one, you know, has a particular combination of features that allows it to operate at higher temperatures in a stable manner. So that goes off the side door and gets the special box and the incredibly high price tag. Um, you know, when when you know to to go back to 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 AMD's uh, tweet, it's it seemed like to to oversimplify what they're doing again because that seems to be my theme today. You know, they are trying to run everything at the highest possible speed, and the way their monitoring works, because they have sensors all over the chip, they can constantly adjust things to try to figure out where they can max out performance and where they can push things farther. So it's not like, okay, we got this core and it'll go this fast. Well, we got these two cores and they'll go this fast. Um, they're like, man, let's just, you know, they, they have the equivalent of a whole bunch of engineers running around, twiddling knobs, trying to figure out where they can maximize performance, um, you know, at, on every single parameter of the chip, which is a radically different architectural decision and a radically different way of handling processor loads than what Intel has done. And they've been, you know, they've been uh, tweaking it, you know, uh, over the last couple of years. We, you know, we saw some modest advantages with the second generation Ryzen, and now we're looking to see some really serious gains. 
as we like to say here, we can't wait till it ships and we can test it ourselves. Um, <laughs> you know, will, it's a really interesting. Oop, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was going to jump in and just for anybody who also doesn't know what chiplets are, would like an explanation of that. So we we're just talking about binning, which is literally just sorting and testing and more sorting. But ch the chiplet design that AMD is using and the reason they were able to go up to 16 cores to begin with, they have, they're, they're coming off with these CPU dies and they're manufacturing those at seven nanometers. That's been their big push. There's seven and everything. There's seven in the, the release date of seven, seven. And there was the right. Radeon seven, which is the first seven nanometer GPU. So they make these CPU dies at seven nanometers and those wafers come off and they do their binning. And then they make an IO die, which is literally input output. It handles, you know, most of the functions that your processor needs to handle in relation to your motherboard, your peripherals, your expansion cards, storage, and that sort of thing. So that is on this package as well. That's manufactured right. at a different process. And actually, all along, they had been telling us that they were manufacturing this IO die at 14 nanometers. We found out at our tech day that that's actually only 12 nanometers. And so really? it's a 12 nanometer IO die, a 7 nanometer CPU die. And when they initially announced this at at CES, it was just one of these little CPU chiplets, they're calling them, just because they're very small CPU dies, and it's a modular approach to making processors, where you could put more than one uh -huh. chiplet on this package if you wanted to, or if you had space for it. So there was a lot of conjecture about them adding another one, and sure enough, there was space for it. And so this new 3950X is two of those eight core seven nanometer processors side by side, on the same package, nestled on top of this larger 12 nanometer <laughs> I.O. die. So that's the, the whole idea behind this approach is being able to have the flexibility of taking these CPU cores, like these dies, that each of these dies mm -hmm. can contain up to eight active cores, and then assemble a CPU after the fact, after the, the lithography, after the, the process of making the CPU die is all done, and then decide, do I want to put one, two, or in the case of those Epic server processors, which are on a much larger package, up to four. So in theory, you could stretch this same modular approach out all the way up, scale it up to a 64-core processor or a 32-core 64-thread processor probably in reality. 